Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Jadal Novel. This edition stop stories. St. Lucia is set to benefit from road improvement works funded by the Government of Japan. The informal accommodation sector aimed to take advantage of government incentives. And the island opens its borders to regional and international travel. St. Lucia is set to benefit from road improvement works funded by the Government of Japan. The Kaldisak Bridge Reconstruction Project, AMAC to begin later this month, is designed to build climate resilience in St. Lucia's infrastructure. The project includes road realignment work, expansion of the existing bridge, and construction of a proposed roundabout. Anisia Antoine has more in this report. The Government of Japan, through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, will be reconstructing the Kaldisak Bridge located on the West Coast. At the convening of Parliament on Tuesday, June 2, 2020, the Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Honorable Stevenson King, explained that the project is designed to deal with the current flooding issues in the Kaldisak Basin and will be supervised by engineers from the Department of Infrastructure. Plans for the reconstruction will include creating a higher elevation and a wider span to reduce bridge closures due to flooding and is expected to strengthen socio-economic development. What the Japanese are going to do in Kaldisak, Mr. Speaker, is just not to put two I-beams across the river and put slabs on it and say we have a bridge and say it costs $42 million. It's much more than this. The studies which had to be done, Mr. Speaker, to determine the hydrology of the river in terms of the flow and, and all of this thing, Mr. Speaker, because it's not water running down a hill, it's water settling in, 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 in a floodplain. And it is likely, if the hydrolo hydrology, Mr. Speaker, isn't adequate, you are, to have, you are likely to have much more rapid flooding than ever before. The Japanese were the ones, Mr. Speaker, who undertook all of the feasibilities, all of the feasibilities, design, finance, engineering, you name it, all of the feasibilities, costing, Speaker, we will merely, we will merely, merely the recipients of donor funds. The Minister for Infrastructure explained that one of the most critical activities being undertaken by JICA is the river retraining. There's a problem with the, with the cul-de-sac basin, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that because the river is meandering, what you do have happening is a situation as you'd find in countries where you have, like um, Holland, where you have those, those flood plains and dikes build, not dikes, Mr. Speaker, but the, the flood plains build up and deltas emerge and it creates a problem and then continues. In our case, we do have the meandering, but the meandering causes flows on either side of the river, causing flooding in, in both directions. So what will happen, Mr. Speaker? The river will be retrained, there will be booms established, and a system that will allow for an elimination of the overflow of the banks to be able to keep the, the, the rivers, the, the basin, or the cul-de-sac basin, free of flooding. The cost of the reconstruction of the Kaldisak Bridge is estimated at $42 million. The project is scheduled to commence in June 2020 for a duration of 24 months. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour has announced the successful completion of negotiations and the award of contracts for three more road projects under the Road Improvement and Maintenance Program Phase 4. On Tuesday, June 2, 2020, officials signed contracts for the following projects. Savannah Aho Road Reconstruction Project, 762 meters. Piat Development Roads Reconstruction, 1,948 meters, and Mondido to Balata Roads Reconstruction Project, 2,349 meters. These projects are expected to bring relief to all road users while stimulating employment and economic activity through the construction sector. Designed to improve climate resilience, the project's scope involves the complete reconstruction of the road surface, construction of proper drainage, and residence access. 
The St. Lucia Tourism Authority Amendment Bill was on Tuesday, 2nd of June 2020, passed during the sitting of Parliament. It was amended to empower the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, to take charge of its own financial affairs. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated that the amendment prepares the SLTA to expand its operations in order to collect the proposed tourism levy fee. The intention, the minister explained, is to give the SLTA the capacity to raise its own funds. Mr. Speaker, as we contemplate the reopening of the tourism sector, this is absolutely crucial uh, when one bear in mind that the uh, country will be facing increased competition, Mr. Speaker, as a tourist destination, because many islands are going to be competing uh, for the recovery uh, of the tourism business in post-COVID. And so, Mr. Speaker, having a very small budget within the context of Caribbean tourism budgets will, in fact, Mr. Speaker, require the Tourism Authority to be laser-focused, to be nimble, and to also ensure, Mr. Speaker, that the board optimize the uh, very uh, small budget in comparison to bigger destinations Mr. Speaker. The amendment will also make allowances for members of the accommodation sector to register under the new St. Lucia Tourism Authority Act, which will enable the collection of the levy. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chasne, explained that the informal accommodation sector has been problematic for years now. He added that the amendment seek to fix the perennial issues that exist. And the reason for the severity of the penalties, Mr. Speaker, which are the same penalties, Mr. Speaker, for the VAT. And it says up to $100,000. Doesn't mean the fine is going to be $100,000. Up to. And yes, it's important that the properties be properly registered, Mr. Speaker, because we have a lot of properties that are not registered and are out there selling and are grossly inadequate. And what we want to ensure is that persons who are supposed to be contributing are contributing. So to do that, Mr. Speaker, they must be registered in the first place. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, highlighted the need to formalize the sector, something which the minister indicated has become even more apparent in the face of COVID-19. When you allow things to go out of control, and then a visitor finds themselves in a place where the accommodation was, and you get bad reviews, you get everything. The brand, which is what the, prime, the, the member from Mikud South spoke about, making St. Lucia the brand that is of high quality, you cannot accomplish this, Mr. Speaker by just allowing things to go anyhow. We must set standards. You know, I, I heard a member this morning talk about, oh, what is happening to the banana farmers and why the bananas was not accepted in Barbados. Standards again, Mr. Speaker. If people think that they can do things anyhow, the world is setting its standards and we have to begin to measure up to the standards if we are going to remain competitive in the various industries. And so, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> what we see there with the tourism authority, being able to do the marketing for all of these, these smaller properties, being able to make that as part of the product offering in St. Lucia. What is wrong with asking these people to meet the basic required standards in order to operate as an entity that provides accommodation for persons? That was Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph. Effective June 4, 2020, St. Lucia opens its borders to regional and international countries. 
The policy includes that travelers present a negative COVID-19 test and undergo mandatory quarantine at a government institution. The Ministries of Health and Tourism will continue working together with stakeholders to coordinate this new phase of the national response to COVID-19. In addition, the Ministries of External Affairs and Tourism continue to coordinate the repatriation of nationals, which include cruise workers, students and other nationals currently seeking to return to St. Lucia. More from Anisia Antoine. St. Lucia will reopen its borders to regional and international countries as of June 4, 2020. Travelers will be obligated to undergo a COVID-19 test, airport screening, and mandatory quarantine at a government institution. Donalyn Vite, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, noted that the protocols adopted in St. Lucia have created a blueprint for other Caribbean islands that will also be opening in June. And for us in St. Lucia, what you have seen is now the development of protocols for the airport, the development of protocols for accommodation service, for, for ride and share and taxi, and in train is the development of protocols for the water bay sector. So for us now, it was to critically assess the visitor journey and see what happens from the thought pattern or process of deciding to come to our gem and landing in St. Lucia, spending time and then leave. And so in looking at that path and that journey, it was to see what sort of footprint we could leave and what sort of impact we could leave with the travel agent, the tour operators, who would have that level of communication with the visitor in doing what to expect, to let them know of the responsible way that St. Lucia would like to open, to, to get in preparations to go in on the plane with that negative COVID test, and what the expectations at host airport is until you get in country. With the quarantine regulations currently placed on St. Lucia's major tourism source markets, including Canada and the United Kingdom, St. Lucia in the first instance will be welcoming flights from the United States via Delta, JetBlue and American Airlines. Amy Charles, manager of air traffic services at the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, noted that protocols and guidelines have been put in place to ensure the safety of the frontline staff at the ports. They have to feel it's a sense of safety and then for the country to feel safe because they are the, fr the frontline staff mm -hmm. that have to face those persons. So, and then you want them to welcome those persons in comfortably, M making the persons comfortable and they themselves being comfortable. So, of course, we realize, okay, how do we take care of those staff? And uh, so as a result, last but in, uh, realized that they had to um, install sneeze guards which we have already com almost completed 100%, it'll be ready for the fourth. We also realize that the staff will have to be wearing masks. There'll be certain staff will have to wear maybe more PPE, more protective gear, uh, because they've all become closer into contact. Some staff may have to wear face shields as well. So we, we put all that on board, knowing um, through the guidance of Mr. Ragnanan and his team what exactly was required. The Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Tourism explained that in the first phase, visitors will only have access to critical services, which include transportation from the airport, a place to stay, and limited water-based recreational activity, also known as coastline tours. We understand the need for everybody to, to regain earning a living, and we're very sensitive to that, but at the same time for us, we need to be able to balance that level of livelihood with the health and safety. And so we're asking for the cooperation of all service providers within the tourism industry. We're asking for the cooperation of the public and persons who are also employees of these service providers. Let us take it on a step-by-step, -step, phased approach. Let us build confidence. Let us do it responsibly. And if we all rally around each other and we're able to do so, sufficiently well, then we could move to adding additional services until we might be at that place where we started before COVID. Ms. Vite also noted that discussion on the repatriation of nationals is currently ongoing. However, nationals wishing to return home are advised to contact the Ministry of Health and Wellness. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, 
Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Quayol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Merci au temps, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kinivest Responsibility for Formation à Gouvernement Sétlisi, GIS, à ce repris Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, car vous êtes au Nouvelle à Creole. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre de l'Ici, Honorable Alain Chasney, vous avez une motion à la Parlement Madi. Comment est-ce que le Parlement a autorisé le ministère des Finances pour prêter le Hotback Development Caribla en somme de 7 945 000 dollars pour financer le Grand Chimé Millennium, la sortie de Bananas, le Chimé L'Hôpital pour le Cold Sac et le Grand Chimé sorti de Cold Sac pour souffrir Un adresse pour justifier l'on de la le Premier ministre Chasney explique que l'argent est déjà en place, mais c'était pour commencer un grand projet chez mes sorties Gozile pour vieux fort. Mais le gouvernement a examiné la situation après, il a dit qu'il plus en faveur du pays pour servir l'argent à la pito à ce démarche chez mes Selon le Premier ministre Chasney, il a examiné le démarche chez mes sorties Banans pour qu'il y ait un sac, et sac pour souffrir. Ça, c'est West Coast. Je vais comprendre le degré de danger que ce chimé a apporté à présent. Le Premier ministre a fait comprendre que les gens qui ont servi le chimé millénium, ça a compris le degré de risque que le chimé a posé pour la vie de et pour raison de la situation de nécessité pour établir le projet de réhabilitation de ce chimé. Le Premier ministre a fait comprendre aussi que la valeur de chimé West Coast a apporté un business touristique. Côté voyage qu'a fait bien souvent, il dit aussi c'est un morceau chimé qui ne brise attention vite. Il y a une plus importante raison, c'est la protection contre des as. Pour les chasse de la chimé, la nation, pour mauvais temps, Thomas, avec des gouttes à falaï qui étaient faites, alors il y a une très nécessaire pour mettre un bon logement en place pour stabiliser les conditions chimiques de la chimé, sac, pour souffrir. Ça a porté un lot de soulagement aussi. C'est diverses communes et villages qui a sous Massou Chimesala pour aider la vie économique yo, significativement. Projet de développement pour bâtir Kai pour résident et business à Oshok, c'est un qui a porté en l'eau belle et une plaisir facilité pour bénéficier qui ont la terre pour acheter ces terrains là. Mais le ministre des Affaires et Développement économique, on a Kai Joseph, déclaré que Kai coûte un milliard cher. Pour acheter ces terrains là parce que l'habitation là là te coûte le gouvernement en pile l'argent parce que là nous te qu'à planer pour un ton gouvernement à manifesto nous nous parler about nous caïni nous caï subsidize um, terre et caï by moon qui passe à fordly ça mine dat gouvernement caï mais a dans l'argent pour ça joindre puis ces bail là so yon ces bail là nous qu'à faire c'est là nous faisons un bon projet qu'on a, nous faisons profit à ce profit ça a qu'à servi pour un décès par là qui passe un décor, et c'est les gens qui passent à joindre tout l'argent qu'ils veulent pour si nous bâtir un développement, so, nous faisons ça servi à danser l'argent ça pour un décès, puis un décès qui a descendu à l'autre par Les gens qui ont été ça fait application pour la Corporation nationale de CAI en PIA, ça c'est NHC. National Housing Corporation, ça c'est un Carrelec Building dans San Souci, et qui a joué une forme pour ça plein, et mes applications pour dire si c'est juste et si c'est CAI et que vous voulez acheter. 
La tenue en cérémonie, la semaine passée, pour te matcher le commencement de travail, pour le ministre Honorable Alain Chasney, le représentatif du Parlement pour notre castrie, Honorable Stevenson King, et le ministre des Affaires et Commerce, Honorable Bradley Félix, qui est parmi plusieurs Grecs qui étaient présents. Le gouvernement s'est laissé, j'ai placé la réhabilitation et la construction chimique du pays plus haut à ce liste de projets qui est important à payer cette liste. Pour le présent, plus grand projet de réhabilitation chimique, j'ai commencé. Et parmi eux, c'est le projet chimé New Development en Soufrière, chimé Blackstone en Jackmel et le projet Spring Road en façade sud Miku. Ce projet chimé, ça là, a embrassé le travail canal et le passage chimé pour les résidents. Le représentatif du Parlement pour installer le canal, Honorable Dominic Fede, qui visitait le projet chimé Blackstone récemment, remarqué à son importance du projet Salah et qui s'y pour l'épouvement en commun avec l'employement en commun de Jacques Mel. Selon le représentatif Fede, pour plusieurs années, les résidents de Blackstone, en particulier, j'ai fait plein de conditions pour le chimé Salah. Plusieurs ans, il dit j'ai fait diverses inconvénients parce que les chauffeurs, l'auto, passagers, t'es qu'à refuser de conduire l'auto à ce moment-là, parce qu'il n'est pas adapté en bonne condition, pièce tout bonnement. On a fait des déclarations aussi. Il est très plein, parce qu'à présent, les résidents qui sont en place pour savoir que l'auto passager, qui est en porte, doit être en bonne condition, en résultat du travail que Jacques a fait à ce moment-là, ce moment-là. Pour cette manière, il a ajouté que toutes ces communes qui branchent et puis Jacques Mel, quand tu la famille, les amis, 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 je ne peux pas considérer que c'est la vie, mais je peux être une autre nouvelle en créole. À présent, je peux vous poser une question. Merci à Pil Primus. Et ça nous amène à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. ou if I repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.